In 2003, on the third season of WWE's Tough Enough, trainer Bob Holly took liberties on one of the trainees, Matt Capitelli, by giving him a black eye and a busted lip in a sparring session. Bob Holly got major backlash for this and to this day, Bob Holly has a reputation for being a bully and among the worst wrestling trainers of all time. But what if I told you that there's a documentary that makes what Bob Holly did look like child's play? Enter Gaia Girls, a Japanese woman's wrestling or joshi documentary that follows a group of girls with the dream of becoming professional wrestlers and training to make their wrestling debut. Sounds wholesome on the surface, but the documentary is marred with straight up psychological manipulation, verbal and mental abuse, as well as physical assault. Join us today on this candid and unsettling peek behind the curtains into the real world of Japanese women's wrestling. This is the dark side of joshi wrestling. This is Gaia Girls. The Guy Girls documentary was originally produced by the BBC and the focus of this documentary is on the Gaia Japan Dojo, which is a training ground in semi-rural Japan for the Joshi wrestling promotion Gaia Japan, which was most popular in Japan in the late 90s and early 2000s. There are two main characters in this documentary. The protagonist of the story is Saika Takauchi, who is a shy young trainee who is training to pass a test in order to make her debut for Gaia Japan. She is a reserved and quiet girl who wants to take on the persona of a larger than life professional wrestler. She herself is bland and boring, but you get the sense that she is desperate to stop being a nobody and become a completely different person that is recognized and praised for being a shining star. From the first introduction of her, you can tell that she has low self esteem and is looking for validation. This sets her up to be taken advantage of and abused throughout the documentary by the antagonist Shigusa Nagayo, who was the founder and one of the owners of Gaia Japan. Shigusa Nagayo was a respected veteran in Joshi wrestling and was hugely popular in Japan during the 80s and early 90s. She got so popular in fact that she created her own Joshi wrestling promotion called Gaia Japan in 1995. And obviously because she was the head booker, she was top of the promotion most of the time. She was kinda like the Triple H of Gaia Japan. She was also the head trainer for a promotion and because of her high standing in the Joshi wrestling scene and her being atop the mountain in Gaia Japan, she was enabled to take liberties on her trainees in the most brutal manner and Saika Takauchi was one of her victims. One of the wrestlers who was under her wing was a young Mako Satomura who at the time had already appeared in WCW and would later go on to become a massive deal in Japanese women's wrestling and become the WWE NXT UK Women's Champion. Mako Satomura was in a high position in Gaia at the time of shooting and had passed her test to debut in Gaia. Mako along with the other trainees at the dojo were responsible for training Saika at the order of Chigusa. In one of the first scenes that rung an alarm bell that something was not totally right is when Saika was sparring with Mako and because Saika's dropkicks went up to Mako's standards, Mako gave her one of the stiffest dropkicks you'll ever see between two women. <laughs> dropkicks are a maneuver that is usually done to the chest and if it is done to the face, the wrestler receiving the move usually has their hands up. But this was just a straight up kick to the face which busted Saika open quite bad. After this incident, Saika gets chastised and scolded by Mako in a harsh manner, but after this, when the issue gets taken up with the big gun Chigusa Nagayo, she rips her apart to shreds and tells Saika that it serves her right for getting hurt the way that she did. This really showed the ruthless nature of the Gaia Dojo, the disregard for the safety of the trainees and how far the trainers are willing to go just to teach their subordinates a lesson. On top of the face splitting sparring sessions, the trainees live in very cramped and cluttered rooms and are subjected to intense training that pushes their minds and bodies to the limit. Their training regimen is grueling and often abusive. This includes physically demanding workouts, strict dieting and sometimes even physical punishment. The trainees would work extremely stiff with each other and Chigusa was always watching like a hawk in the night. Chigusa also made sure to put a lot of pressure onto Saika to let her know that there's a lot of expectation on her shoulders and so that she doesn't mess up her first test to debut for Gaia Japan. So it was time for Saika's first test in which she had to go through a series of time bouts with other wrestlers who had passed the test already. Chigusa and one of the owners and finances of Gaia Japan were watching intently. After Saika's stiff and hard hitting bouts for her tests were done, Chigusa absolutely rips into Saika and she begins to cry. Chigusa tells her to give up and go home because she failed. She tells the bawling Saika that she's useless and then begins to slap and manhandle her in a cruel manner. This was very disturbing to watch as Chigusa goes on to further embarrass Saika in front of everybody. Chigusa is in a position of power and she's exhibiting all sorts of abuse through a treatment of Saika. 
Straight after watching Saika's unsettling test and unnerving ordeal with Chigusa, one trainee who hasn't done her test yet says that she wishes to quit training at the Gaia Dojo. This trainee says that she lost the will to wrestle after seeing everything that just happened with Saika. You know it's bad when other trainees are willingly leaving the wrestling camp because it's too brutal and toxic. The worst part about all of this is that she isn't even the first trainee in this documentary to leave, nor the last, due to first-hand seeing the psychological, mental, physical and verbal abuse dished out to Saika. Earlier in the documentary, a trainee named Wakabayashi arrived at the dojo. She had already been to the dojo before, but due to the toxic environment, she left. She wanted another shot and Chigusa decided to give her another chance, but this time with higher stakes. Chigusa said that if she lets her down again, then she'll kill her. Of course, she wasn't being serious and was not literally going to kill her, but there's almost something so psychopathic and chilling the way she said it so nonchalantly with a smile on her face. As Wakabayashi began to train, she remembered how grueling it was, but what really set her over the edge was watching how badly Chigusa treated Saika, which must have brought back so many bad memories. Because of all of this, Wakabayashi just left in the middle of the night, without telling a single soul. She straight up just dipped. It gets even worse as there's another trainee named Sato who arrives, and she is the third trainee to leave the dojo. Sato is a young girl who has a dream of becoming a Joshi wrestler. She arrived at the dojo with a concerned mom. One of the owners and finances of Gaia Japan assured Sato and her mom that there are no horrid women there and that everyone is nice. This is a common manipulation tactic. To lure someone in with false promises and narratives that isn't really reality. Sato's mom bites the bait and leaves her daughter in Chigusa's care. And over the next few days, she is trained so hard to the point that she's in tears. But what really pushes her over the edge is watching all the brutal sparring sessions and general harsh mistreatment of Saika Takauchi. This poor young crying girl saw how bad the abuse was with Saika and she understood why Wakabayashi and the other girl quit. So she decided to quit herself. All of Saika's harsh training up to that point was not for nothing though as she was given another chance. She was offered a second test and this was to be her last chance. The first four time bouts went well but then something happens that is different to her first test as the big boss Chigusa Nagayo is her final opponent. Chigusa is working incredibly stiff with Saika. Just listen to the impact of these shots on Saika. Saika even gets busted open by the vicious shots. Watching this impromptu match is unsettling. Saika was just straight up getting f up. But what was even more unnerving, and perhaps the most uncomfortable moment of the documentary, is what happened afterwards. A battered and bloodied Saika is looking up at the sadistic Chigusa while she's raining down uncaring and remorseless words toward her, and she begins to barbarically slap the helpless Saika over and over again. Saika is just standing there sobbing while Chigusa ruthlessly berates her and assaults her even more. This is one of the most tense and powerful scenes in the documentary as the stoic Chigusa pulls the weeping and bloodied Saika to her side and tells her to tell everyone what she's feeling. As the camera zooms into Saika's beaten and sympathetic face, she stays mostly quiet and mutters only a couple of words in about a minute. This was chilling and haunting. Usually documentaries are filled with loads of cutscenes and narrations, but this one doesn't do that. This is what makes this scene so powerful. We are just sitting in Saika's inescapable pain along with her. Chigusa Nagayo is the main cause of all the pain throughout this documentary, but I'm pretty sure you've heard the saying, hurt people hurt people, and that's exactly what's going on with Chigusa. She revealed that her father was in the army and growing up he was extremely strict. She revealed that when he was home, he would constantly beat her and her mother. She revealed that her father's way of teaching her lessons through violence and hostility has been passed on to her and she repeats it exactly with the younger trainees and that's why she was so cruel to Saika. The reason, at least in her mind, behind her blind rage and cruelty was so that Saika could stand up for herself. Throughout the documentary, Chigusa constantly refers to the trainees as her children because she doesn't have any biological ones of her own due to pursuing her wrestling dream. In her view, she is raising them without rest and sacrificing everything of herself so that they can reach their potential, kind of like how an actual parent would do. This is why she takes it so personally when the guy girls leave the dojo. She watched them grow and formed a seemingly unbreakable bond with them, but when that shatters, it hurts her. When this happens, sometimes she reacts in a somber and sad manner, as if she's lost a child, but then other times she erupts and just completely berates them for betraying her love. Either way, it's all coming from a broken place. Chigusa is not a bad person, she's just been caught in this sort of unresolved trauma reenactment routine. 
All of this aside, Chigusa decided that Saika had passed the test and now she was allowed to make her debut for Gaia Japan, of which she did in 1999. She had a good first match against Mako Sadamura, of which she lost. After her match at the press conference, while she was writhing in pain, the most harrowing and sobering thing about all of this was revealed. Saika was hoping to become someone new through wrestling, but through her responses and demeanor, she was still the shy and demure Saika that she always was. That's probably why her wrestling career never really took off and she only wrestled actively for about two years, retiring in 2001. Today Saika Takeuchi's whereabouts are unknown, but that's the story of the dark side of Joshi wrestling. That's the story of Gaia Girls. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other videos. Also, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. But anyway, goodbye.